Thank you for joining us for our Supercharged September video series. My name is Lisa Drake and I'm Assistant Director of Fleet Electrification at Merchants Fleet. And today I'm joined by Jenna Evans, Global Sustainability Manager at Ben & Jerry's. We're gonna talk about her sustainability work and the past, present and future of sustainability at Ben & Jerry's. So welcome to the Supercharged series, Jenna. Would you take a minute Thank to introduce you. yourself? Sure, um, yeah. I'm uh, someone who's had a, a, my entire career in sustainability. Um, uh, happened to be completely in the dairy industry with previous roles at Stonyfield and Danone and now with Ben & Jerry's here. Um, I've been with Ben & Jerry's for about the past six years um, and I work a lot on our climate strategy and also sustainable packaging here. That's great. That's a lot of exciting stuff. And, you know, Ben & Jerry's, we know, has a long history of being an environmentally minded company and a sustainability leader and advocate. Um, you know, and in the time that you've been there, six years, how has Ben & Jerry's, well, overall, how has Ben & Jerry's approach to sustainability evolved over time, and especially since you've been there? Yeah, I would say like from a like a historic perspective, it's 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 always been sort of on an upward trajectory. And I feel like the the work that we've done has gotten deeper and uh, more meaningful as time has gone on. I'm like, I'm very lucky in this role to be following in the footsteps of other great leaders that were here before me at Ben & Jerry's. Um, and they really paved a path for me to be successful. So when I came into this role, I didn't have to fight with leadership to align with goals. I didn't have to fight for a budget. Everyone was already on board thanks to my predecessor, which is an amazing gift to have as somebody in sustainability. Um, but yeah, since I've been in this role, um, I've sort of evolved it um, into a, a deeper climate strategy and sort of tried to, to market that within the company. Um, so when I had joined, Ben and Jerry's had just submitted their climate targets to science-based targets, um, but the, the focus was really on sourcing, especially within our Caring Dairy program. And so I've expanded it um, quite a bit to look broadly at uh, the global view. Um, we're working on new science-based targets um, as well that include the, the flag emissions or the forestry, land use, and agriculture emissions. Um, and then I've also done a lot of work sort of collaborating with different departments like research and development, manufacturing and marketing to make sure that as everybody's developing new products that they are taking sustainability into account with everything that they do. That's great. Well, that takes a lot of um, alignment building and, and work, which is probably one of the challenges in, in, in your job. I, what are some of the biggest challenges that you're facing in advancing these goals? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head there, Lisa. Um, working with leadership and making sure they're aligned, I, I would say particularly in Ben & Jerry's circumstance where we are a wholly owned subsidiary with a parent company, um, it can be challenging to work with leadership levels um, at a parent company that doesn't share the same vision. Large companies often come with, you know, lots of process and red tape. Um, and some of my biggest projects have taken over a year to gain approval um, and get off the ground. And there's other big projects that I know could be really impactful that are still on the shelf, unfortunately, due to that red tape. Yeah, well, it's it's a long haul in 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 this space sometimes, and um, but I have to ask you, speaking of hauling, haha, um, being in fleet management, I, I want to ask you a couple of questions around transportation. I believe that at Ben and Jerry's you have some electric vehicles in use at some of your facilities. So I was wondering if you could tell me about them. Sure. Yeah, we have, um, we don't have a fleet per se, but at um, our manufacturing facilities here in Vermont, we do have some yard trucks that we converted into electric vehicles last year, um, which was really exciting for us because the yard trucks are really big workhorses out in the yard. They're always hauling around in different trailers um, with ice cream on them and they were running quite often. So now by electrifying them, we've eliminated a lot of diesel use and improved the local air quality as well around the, the factories. And then in addition, um, we also have a lot of catering vehicles and marketing trucks um, coming out of our central headquarters. And we have one marketing vehicle, a Tesla, that's actually been converted with an ice cream freezer in the back, which is really cool. But within the next six months or so, we're planning to convert about half of our catering vehicles into electric 
Um, can't tell you which one's top secret, but we're really excited for that to come. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, let us know if we can help you with that. But um, I'm also thinking about the long haul trucking that you do and that um, I know that there can be a big impact from emissions of heavy duty trucks on the road, transporting refrigerated product and ingredients. And um, how have you been able to address that? Or what does the future of that look like for Benetieri's? Yeah, so I don't personally work on the, the transportation parts very much. There's a, a team that sort of coordinates all of the North American logistics, but in their roles, I know that they haven't started wholeheartedly on electrification quite yet. They've been doing a lot of um, efficiency work on like reducing the mileage and changing modalities and things like that. Um, but I think, you know, within the plans, we definitely foresee electrification as a priority. Um, but I know that they're waiting a lot um, on what's going to happen from a governmental support perspective, both here in North America, as well as Europe. Um, I think the thing they're most excited about right now, like as regulation stands is sort of the last mile delivery. Um, so we have like a, a big section of our, of our business called ice cream now that like is, you know, for people that want to watch their movie and get ice cream right now. So like the last minute delivery and um, for things like that, electrification is really huge and like highly available. Um, but for some of our, our bigger transportation and logistics needs, um, you know, we're not, we don't really feel in control of, um, you know, the recharging structure and things like that, that are going to make it possible for big businesses to change over. Um, but we're excited for it. Yeah, certainly those heavy duty trucks are kind of the furthest out in terms of electrification. And as you mentioned, the charging infrastructure is really challenging. So um, a lot to come in that space. So we'll continue to be working on that and um, looking forward to seeing what you can do in that area too. Um, so broadly speaking, not specifically about transportation, but um, what kind of emerging technologies or practices do you, do you see on the horizon that could be game changers in addressing the impacts that you're trying to improve? Um, so one of the things that I'm really excited about is, you know, within Ben and Jerry's footprint, a huge part of that comes from dairy farming um, and the cows themselves. And there's been a lot of development over the last few years about feed additives that can help modify how the cow's rumen is digesting their feed and reduce the methane that comes from cows as they digest their food. That's, I think that will be a huge game changer. Um, it's still early days, I would say, but we're really excited for that. And we've also at Ben and Jerry's developed a comprehensive program to help not only look at how cows are ruminating, but like everything on a dairy farm from how things are cropped and manure management and so forth to help reduce the impacts of dairy farming itself. <coughs> um, the other thing I guess I would say is on the manufacturing side, there's some, um, I don't think it's actually new technology, but heat pump technology that's going to help us reduce our, the, the, you know, our fuel use, which is really exciting and decarbonizing our manufacturing. That's great. Those are good. Those are good challenges. Um, thanks for sharing those thoughts. Um, I'm curious about consumers. I mean, you have such a, a loving relationship with your consumers and they're, they're loyal to loyalty to your brand. I mean, how are consumer expectations influencing your work and, and more, maybe even more broadly consumers impact on the food industry and expectations for sustainability? Yeah. So I guess when I think about it personally, and I was talking with our consumers, were insights people about this question. Um, I feel like my work specifically is actually well beyond what consumers are asking businesses for, what they want to know about and what they even are willing to try to understand, um, which is exciting because that means that we're, you know, on the forefront of, of what should be done and we're doing it because we know what's right, not because consumers are asking us to do it. Um, we do know like from our consumer insights research that as of now, at least when it comes to ice cream, consumers aren't really willing to pay more, but they are expecting us to do more. Um, so that's like a really tricky place to be from a food perspective um, because, you know, margins are not incredibly high on food products. Um, 
And we know also that consumers aren't using sustainability um, as a primary decision factor when it comes to foods. They care much more about what brand it is, what flavor it is, and things like that. Um, so that makes it tricky. Um, for Ben & Jerry specifically, our consumer base is largely Gen Z and Millennials. Um, and so that's interesting because we know that sustainability and environmental issues track, um, but they're much more popular in that age uh, bracket. And so it's becoming more of a non-negotiable to be doing the right thing. So I think, you know, we're right in step with what's going to be expected of us in the future as well. Great. Well, um, you know, one of the things I was wondering about is in terms of a trend in corporate sustainability, um, it seems like there's more and more demand about reporting. And, you know, this touches on different companies, depending on your pub if you're public or private and and higher positioned in the marketplace. Um, but, you know, I think that we'll agree that measuring impacts and being transparent is important, but it's also um, when reporting gets really onerous, a lot of time spent on tracking and reporting that can distract your resources from actually doing the work and implementing change. And um, so I'm wondering what you're seeing in that space and, and how do you balance those needs at Ben & Jerry's? Yeah, I feel like, especially in the time that I've had here at Ben & Jerry's the last five years or so, there's been more and more both regulatory change and then just sort of peer pressure from other like-minded companies about reporting on all different topics um, in, in different you know geographies as well. There's different rulings here in North America versus in Europe. Um, so it's becoming quite a uh, alphabet soup of uh, you know, different organizations that you need to report to. My role specifically is largely um, slightly aside from that, being part of, a, of a, you know, a parent organization that does take on a lot of the public disclosures and things like that. Um, but Ben & Jerry's also does uh, independent reporting and what you said is absolutely true that the reporting can, can be very manual. Um, there's not a lot of compilation of data. And so it does take resources away from taking real action to report on the action that was done in the previous year. Um, so I, I don't know if I have an answer. It's very difficult to manage. It's a real challenge um, that we deal with every day. Like I said at the beginning that I am super lucky that I have a budget. And so some of that work is outsourced where it makes sense to, um, but it also sucks my time and it sucks, I know, different resources within my team's time as well. It is really a big challenge. Yeah, all right. Well, um, I'm wondering overall, of all the things that Ben & Jerry's has done in terms of sustainability, what are you what are you most proud of? Um, so I think a couple projects come to mind. I would say sort of like the easy lift that I'm really proud of is that within the first year of working with our scoop shops, we were able to get on a path to eliminate plastic straws and spoons globally, which is really exciting since they had been using them for years and years. And so now we've transitioned away from them completely. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> um, another one is is around we are putting in an anaerobic digester next to our factory up here in Vermont. It's a project that I had worked on, or I have been working on because it's still ongoing. It's supposed to launch next week actually, but I've been working on it for I think five and a half years. Um, it's been quite a slog and I would say this is, I think a, I like to talk about this project, especially um, with younger people because this project was a complete flop the first time I pitched it. Um, so in 2019 was the first time I pitched this to leadership and this was like global leadership. And I was sure it was going to go through, had everything buttoned up. And then at like the 11th hour, it was just completely smacked down, completely declined. It was over, they just closed the book on it. And so that was very humbling experience. I thought I was so prepared. And then I had to regroup, starting with a, like a post-mortem of what happened, what went wrong, how did this get killed after all this work? Because at that point I had been working on it for a year and a half to get ready to present. So I spent the next 15 months regrouping to present again, because I knew this was the right thing to do. 
And during that time, COVID started and I had had a newborn. And so this like all culminated into one night in June, two in the morning, because I was presenting to leaders in Europe. I had to present at two in the morning on why this project should go through and they finally approved it. And so I feel like that was like a career highlight for me to have persevered after being, you know, given no as an answer. And just, you know, with all the things that were happening personally and professionally during that time, it was like so exciting to see something happen that was, um, you know, it was for the best for the company, it's best for the environment. And it's actually gonna be starting to operate next week. So it's actually kind of cool to talk about it right now because it's so close to being finished, but it's been such a long project. So I'm really proud of that one. Wow, congratulations. That's, <laughs> that's a great story. And um, that is cool, but it's as soon as, soon as next week. And so that digester is gonna be, it, Tell us just a little bit about the role, of what it's going to be. Oh doing. yeah, yeah, I know. I forget people don't know what digesters are. Um, I know you do, of course, but for the audience here, um, an anaerobic digester is acts a lot like a stomach, and it will digest food waste. And so, this particular digester is going to be taking um, ice cream waste from our largest uh, manufacturing facility in Vermont. It's also going to be taking food waste from other manufacturers um, in the Vermont area, whether I like um, beverages or food scraps and things like that. And so it, it takes in the food waste, digests it in this big tank. And during that process, the bacteria that di are digesting the food put off methane, which is then used as a biogas to create renewable electricity. And that electricity is going back to the state of Vermont um and we're looking at potentially using that waste heat in our factory as well to try to eliminate natural gas usage so it's really it's quite a cool little ecosystem of um you know using energy and creating renewable energy and using waste so it's a very exciting project so you have to keep your eyes peeled for the new the press release oh yeah that's great so you're gonna be flavor named after <laughs> <laughs> no, but you could always hope. It, marketing doesn't like it when I talk about food waste and bacteria and gas. We just water. Around. <laughs> yeah, well, I get jazzed up by that, as you know, so I'm excited for you. And um, thank you for your persistence on that and sharing that story with us. And, and, and as a consumer, you know, thank you for, for all you do and the great ice cream that you bring forward and the eliminating plastic spoons and straws from the scoop shops. Um, those are all great wins. So thank you for doing all that and sharing that with us today. Thank you. It was really nice to chat with you. Yeah, great to chat with you too. And, um, and good luck.